So in this physics question, we'll be going over work done and energy, resolving vectors as well as Newton's laws. So we have safety barriers are used on UK motorways to prevent vehicles crossing from one carriageway to the other. The barriers also absorb some of the kinetic energy of the vehicle and deflect the vehicles along the barrier. The standard test of a safety barrier uses a vehicle that contains dummies. The total mass of the vehicle and its contents is this, and the initial speed is this. And then we're trying to work out the initial kinetic energy. We're trying to show that it's about 700 kilojoules. So, kinetic energy, half mv squared. The speed that we have is in kilometers per hour. So one kilometer per hour is the same thing as one kilometer divided by one hour. The h to the minus one will just bring that to the bottom of the fraction. Convert to SI base units, a thousand meters divided by 3,600 seconds. And then so V would be equal to 110 times one kilometer per hour. So times a thousand over 3,600. This will end up being 30.556. And then we can put this into half mv squared. So it'll be a half times 1.5, 10 to the three times 30.556 squared, which would be about 700,000 joules. For part two, we have the test vehicle hits the safety barrier at an angle of 20 degrees, as shown in the figure. Calculate the component of momentum of the test vehicle in a direction along the line of the safety barrier. And we want to give an appropriate unit for our answer. Okay, so our velocity, so here is our car. Our velocity is 30.556 meters per second at an angle of, as we can see from our diagram, 20 degrees to the horizontal. We want to work out the component of momentum along the line of the safety barrier, which means along this direction. So we have to resolve, first of all, our velocity in this direction. So if I draw a line down here, using Sokotoa, this would be 30.556 cos 20, and 30.556 cos 20 is equal to 28.713. We want to work out momentum, so we just times that by mass. So 28.713 multiplied by the mass, 1.5, 10 to the 3, and that would be equal to 43,000. And the units for momentum would be newtons seconds. You can also use kilograms meters per second. And that's just mass times velocity, the units for mass times velocity. For 5.3, immediately after the collision, the test vehicle moves along the safety barrier with no change in momentum in this direction. And we're trying to show that the kinetic energy lost is about 80,000 joules. So we want to use half mv squared, the initial velocity, let's call that v1, the initial velocity was the 30.556 that we worked out before. And then the new velocity, this is when it moves along the barrier, we worked that out to be 28.713. So then we can do a half m v1 squared minus a half m v2 squared. To make things a bit easier to calculate, we can factorize out the half m. Okay, so this gives us a half multiplied by 1.5, 10 to the 3, multiplied by v1 squared, 30.556 squared, minus v2 squared, 28.713. And that gives me 82 kilojoules, which is about 80. 
5.4, the steel safety barrier deforms during the collision. For the barrier to pass the test, the vehicle should not move more than 1.5 meters towards the other carriageway. The barrier can apply an average force of 60 kilonewtons at right angles to the carriageway. Deduce whether the safety barrier will pass the test. Okay, so the maximum work done by this average force and this distance, if we do work done as force times distance, this would be 60,000 multiplied by 1.5, which would be 90,000. So in other words, when a car crashes into this barrier, the maximum energy that the barrier can remove whilst operating within the safe parameters is 90,000 joules. In our scenario, the energy that we have to dissipate is 82 kilojoules. So therefore, in this case, the barrier does pass the safety test as the maximum amount of energy that can be dissipated is greater than the energy required to be dissipated in this scenario. For the final part of this question, a different safety barrier uses a solid concrete wall, which does not deform. The same standard test is carried out on a concrete wall. Discuss which type of barrier will cause less damage to the dummies in the test. Okay, so to have less damage to the dummies in the test, the force that they experience has to go down. So in order for the force that they experience to go down, we have to consider this equation here, forces rate of change of momentum, delta P over delta T. The change in momentum of the dummies cannot change. They're traveling at a certain speed to begin with, it was about 30 meters per second, and they will in the end come to rest. So their change in speed, and therefore their change in momentum, does not change. So the only way that we can assess whether or not the force on the dummies will change is by seeing if the time of the collision will change. For a solid concrete wall, as you could probably imagine, the time of collision will be very short. If you were to have a steel barrier which deforms 1.5 meters, the time of collision is extended if the time of collision is extended for the steel barrier, if delta T is bigger, that means the force will go down. 